Hi, Greg from Flybubble here. It's the 1st of May, so it's the first day of the foot and flybubble. So here's a short video just to show you how to identify the best flying weather in the days ahead. If you look below the YouTube video page, you'll see a link to the resources. And there I list all the weather sites that I use in this video. Now the best way to organize these is to put them under your bookmarks on your web browser. Make a folder called weather and then bookmark all of the pages that we use and put them into that folder. What this lets you do is you can go down to the bottom, open all in tabs and you get all of your weather sites up in one hit. Right, so there they are. The first one is XC Weather. I find this very useful just for a quick overview find the area that you're going to be flying in. For us it's Shoreham Airport's the closest station. If you hover over it you get the current conditions and if you click on it you get a forecast. From this I can see straight away that tomorrow is looking possible. At the moment it's showing 10 miles an hour which is good. 13 on this forecast is kind of my upper limit. If it's showing more than 13 miles an hour, it's probably going to be blown out. Bear in mind this forecast is for ground level. So that gives you an idea. I can see it's northeast, partly sunny, no rain forecast, and the wind's borderline. That's all I need from this. Great. On to the next site. So this is a synoptic chart. Always check to see what time it is. Up there it says 6 o'clock Wednesday. So this is 6 o'clock this morning. And clicking ahead at zero zero so midnight tonight and it shows a collapsed frontal system England is sitting over there. Now don't be too worried about not being able to analyze this in the early days it's useful to just watch what happens on the synoptic chart and over time you'll build up experience and be able to read this quite quickly. Um, basically the wind moves from the high pressures to the low pressures where the isobars are tight you're going to have strong wind you want a big area of light wind with a big gap between the isobars and you don't want a cold front or warm front directly over the site that you're going to be flying. Okay, here's something a lot simpler. Meteor Blue, pretty good forecasts. I've set it up for a station which is kind of central to our sites. And looking at today, it's a nice sunny day. Tomorrow, basically nice and sunny, you can see if there's any clouds coming in and you can see the wind strength and direction. 18 miles an hour, gusting 24, that's pretty strong. That's confirming what I've seen so far, looking like it's a borderline to windy day. Okay, down at the bottom here, rain spots, very useful on the days where there is rain forecast. It'll give you an idea of the direction and the amount of rain coming in just quickly looking through ahead I can see there's no rain forecast for the next five days which is great for the UK okay sat24.com I use this mainly for having a quick look at what today looks like from the satellite so it gives you a animated image of the clouds moving over the ground you can see what's approaching it's also very useful for giving it a, getting an idea of the wind and how the wind moves around the high pressures. So this is easier to understand than the normal synoptic chart. You can see the pattern as it's going through the timeline. Gives you an idea of what's coming up. What's very good is weather forecast showing you the rain. So you can see there's some rain that approached the bottom of England some more rain coming in and it doesn't quite get there great so the only bit of rain to watch out for is that but on Thursday morning coming in close to England but things are looking good Met Office they're very good at local forecasts and very good at getting the wind direction and strength right as well as the rainfall so what you do is go to the day you're looking at obviously the next day Thursday there 
and click on rainfall that's uh, secondary insight into the rain there's a little bit of rain that was approaching Thursday morning and it stays in the channel wind looking at Thursday morning you got where we're trying to fly is here Lewis that sort of area you got seven miles an hour 12 now my cutoff here is about 13 that's starting to be borderline remember again this is ground level forecast wind gust sometimes you get a massive variability that's 12 to 24 it's quite gusty so it's indicating that there could be a lot more wind just above the ground and it might well be blown out right I really have saved the best for last this is RASP it is awesome and all of the soaring pilots use this forecast to try and identify a good day um, I always use this last because you've built up a good idea from the other websites of the basic conditions and then you can look at RASP to get confirmation don't get bogged down in this it can get quite complicated but it can also be very simple if you just look at some parameters so we're looking zoom down to the area that you're looking for I'm just rolling my little mouse wheel in and there I've got the foot and fly bubble course Brighton Devil's Dyke cross to Lewis down to Hanover, New Haven. So that's our area that we're interested in. Let's uh, click on the day that you want. Looking for tomorrow. 12 o'clock, simple, middle of the flying window. And the first parameter, thermal updraft velocity. Uh, it shows you that there's some thermals around. The most important one, boundary level, average wind. This is boundary layer, average wind the wind that's coming between ground and cloud base rushing over the landscape and there straight away you can see it's pretty windy if you right click on your mouse it'll show you the wind speed in knots okay that's pretty strong and my rule of thumb for rasp is about 13 knots 13 14 maybe at a push so that's blown out you can look around that time early 10 o'clock and late 2 o'clock to see if it changes 17 knots still in the afternoon so to me that day is pretty much blown already I can see that okay so how do we find a good day simple way is just to click on star rating which gives you an idea of the potential for cross country takes a lot of factors into consideration so that's Thursday let's get it back to 12 o'clock <laughs> totally rubbish Friday looking more interesting Saturday hmm okay so let's look at Saturday boundary level average wind again and we've got a southwesterly it's running across this way it's probably west southwest which makes it possible to fly at Mount Cayburn which is somewhere over there if you click there 14 knots okay that's windy borderline possible but being Saturday and two days ahead this forecast could change so it's well worth watching this forecast and seeing if it improves for us surface wind tells you a little bit more information If there's a massive change at altitude you can see it here slightly lighter at surface 11 so that's flyable other things that are important H lift this tells you how high you will get on your paraglider so around Mount Cabern area we're looking at 3300 foot that's enough to work with other things that might be nice to look at how much sunshine is there going to be that's pretty good a little bit of cloud and cumulus cloud base that shows you that the cumulus cloud base is around about 3000 foot 
so quite usable right so that's it in a nutshell remember you're looking for days with light wind no rain and good air good luck finding your day for your foot and fly bubble attempts or for cross-country flying wherever you are in the UK. Cheers.